Today, I want to answer some of your burning questions as it pertains to hair care. So listen, I have Tiffany. Tiffany asks, how to know your hair type? How to know your hair type? Well, you know what? The easiest way to know your hair type, and this is for somebody who's not experienced, no professional background, is yeah, to touch right your hair. Oh! Hi guys, Cornell Jermaine here. Listen, we're back with another video right here on the YouTube channel. With this one, this is part two of the Know and Grow Your Hair Q&A, me answering your hair care questions. Now, this video was birthed out of the Know and Grow Your Hair Challenge, which we did not long ago, where the registrants of the seminar submitted questions at the time of registration. They submitted some of their burning hair care questions. However, during the session, I was only able to get to so many people. So I said, I'm gonna provide the answers to these people, these beautiful young ladies, here on the platform so that not only they could see the answer, but it could help some of you guys as well. So I'm here back answering part two. Now, these are questions that individuals, specific individuals submitted. Some of them are specific to their hair type. Some of them are in general. So I think there may be a question on here that might help you if you're just bypassing here and just perusing through the videos, trying to learn. I think there may be something that you can learn as well. So stick around to hear some of the questions so that you can see if I offer some knowledge, information, expertise that just so happens to help you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let's get into the episode. So I want to take the next question um, is from Katrina. Katrina, Katrina asked how to thicken my thin edges, how to thicken my thin edges. Now, let me say something about edges when it comes to edges. And this is something that people fail to realize. But the area of your hair that is the most prone to breakage is your edges. And when we were talking about edges, we're talking about around the perimeter, around the hairline, typically around the front, the back as well, but definitely around the front. And that is just because of the follicles there and all that stuff. It's just the most prone to breakage. So you have to be careful with your edges in general, especially for those that like to press and press and beeswax and wax and mold and all that kind of stuff. Over time, they will thin out. However, thin edges also are heredity. What? No. <laughs> heredity. What? Hereditary. <laughs> thin edges also are hereditary. So you have to be careful even more so if you're one where maybe uh, big Ma, Grandma, whoever else had thin edges, and now you're starting to see them as well, there could just be an issue of hereditary. So you want to definitely jump on it because not only are you genetically prone to it, but if you're doing styles or hair care regimens that are also breaking it out, you're definitely going to see some breakage and thinning. So, but when it comes to thin edges, some things that we've seen that have worked here in the industry different oils i like myel's uh rosemary it's at the my hair care professional my professional hair care uh website so you can buy it there but it's it's an oil with a dropper i would suggest that that's been a good one especially because it's infused with biotin to strengthen the hair that you have and most times if we can strengthen the hair that we have we can ultimately help empower that hair that is trying to push through the follicle. So uh, that oil is definitely one that is good. I would refrain from a lot of heavy, hard pressing when it comes to if you're one that wears a press and curl, maybe do a soft press and a soft press is simply a warm comb. So you're not having a hot comb on your hair, but a warm comb to smooth that. Even so, I would say, hey, if you can refrain from any heated tools, blow dryers, flat irons, hot combs, for a while, I would even suggest that because what tends to happen is people are, also, are always trying to camouflage and cover or trying to uh, 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 hide their edges that they're constantly just breaking the hair or just a lot of wear and tear is happening and then it's just making it worse. So sometimes, I'm not saying you have to do this, but sometimes just doing a straight cold turkey cut and dried, you know, no heat, no nothing, just good conditioning, good treatments, good moisturizers can help give that hair enough rest to where you can really see a difference in those edges. Secondly, I would say if you're doing any chemicals to your head, so relaxers, hair colors, I would definitely make sure I'm using strengthening products, treatments as well. You know what I mean? Uh, to help strengthen that hair. 
Uh, but again, if you're going to see, if you have extremely thin or a thin problem around the edges, my best bet would be to just try to refrain from anything that can ultimately break or tear those edges. So that would be chemicals, heated elements, a lot of brushing and over styling, a lot of braids, sew-ins. Keep in mind, all these protective styles that people are wearing can take some wear and tear on the edges. They can really do some damage. Even though they're protective, they can really tear the edges out because obviously some of them are too tight. They're pulling too much. You get what I'm saying? So that's why I say cold turkey, cut and dry, nothing. If you have a pretty curl texture, if you have a style or something where you can wear your hair in its natural state without a lot of pulling, tugging, etc., do it, do it, do it, do it. It will change your you know your look a little bit but i guarantee you'll find a way to make it pretty and cute and dial it up but you it definitely will help the environment so that now you can set your hair can now grow a little bit or at least you can see if there's growth opportunity because if there's if it's an issue where there's some type of hereditary alopecia or something of that nature then obviously no matter what you do it's, it's gonna have it's gonna be a problem trying to grow it back because Alopecia means the follicles are not actively working. You get what I'm saying? However, if that's not the issue, then doing these things would, I think, help you see some progress. So I hope that helps you. I really do. Uh, Miss Noreen. Noreen asks, I have natural curly long hair. What is the best to lock the curls in and keep them tight for longer? Miss Noreen, if you have naturally curly long hair, uh, I would, I'm assuming you may, I, I'm not sure what, what curl type you have. Uh, maybe it's a three, three C, three B or something like that. Keep them tight longer. You definitely just want to use that. First of all, you want to be moisturizing because what, what happens with curly hair is curly hair curls better when it's properly moisturized or when it's properly hydrated, I should say. That's why when you go to wet it in the shower and people are always like, oh, all this shrinkage, shrinkage, shrinkage where the hair gets really curly. That's because all that hydration has empowered that curl to now fluff and just give it life. You get what I'm saying? You want to be hydrating and moisturizing well, first of all. So that means you need some good product. And I I, I recommend a good treatment is obviously Joyco, uh, Joyco Moisture Treatment. I've been giving it to everybody that I can say because I know it's a really dense, very good uh, moisturizing treatment. Uh, depending on your hair type, it may be a little too much, but... Well, you, there's ways around that you just rinse it a little extra and maybe go behind it with a you know something just to kind of cut it a little bit but a good moisturizing treatment which is going to be a more thicker denser product uh then i would go in and make sure i'm using leave-in products but then on top of the leave-in whether it's a spray or cream i would also be adding some type of curl jelly now there's a curl jelly auntie somebody auntie or miss missy somebody but it's a great curl jelly so it's a jelly kind of product that helps to really coat that hair shaft so that their curls can really pop and come through. It may be a little too much uh, as far as the density of the product for you. And if so, I would just cut it with maybe a little bit of water, just a little bit of water. But I think it's something that will be useful for you seeing nice curls. Like you said, keep them tight for longer. Have it moisturized well with uh, a deep treatment as well as a good leave-in and using that product, I think will give you a nice tight curl for longer. Also, you wanna be careful about how you're maintaining it at night because sometimes it dries out at night if you're not properly putting it up. So I would, if you have long curly hair, I would just pull it up into a nice top knot. You know what I mean? Put it up in a night knot, not at the top with some nice, um, with a, a satin band, well not band, scrunchy, scrunchy. Uh, put a bonnet on and go to bed. What's going to happen then, it's going to allow that hair to retain the moisture so that you don't wake up in the morning with dehydrated hair. Because if you don't realize it, and this is for everybody, at night, our body kind of gets dehydrated. That's why many times you wake up in the morning thirsty, because something happens at night to where our body kind of loses its hydration. The same is true for your hair. So if you're keeping it engulfed or encased, I should say, in this beautiful satin scarf, not only are you keeping that moisturizer kind of intact, but you're helping to refrain from the dryness that may be in the air. Okay, so I hope that helps you, uh, Miss Noreen. L Linda, 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 listen, Linda. Uh, <laughs> her question is how to maintain your hairline. I think I just told Miss Katrina about the hairline. I think that was her who asked about the edges. Linda, the hairline, the edges, all of that around 
is always sensitive. So how to maintain it, the same thing I said for her, keeping the chemicals if you use them at a minimum, uh, definitely watching your styling, headbands, hats. And to be honest with you, my hairline is weak in the front. My hairline is weak in the front. And why? Because I wear a lot of hats. So if, if you don't realize, sometimes, you, you know, hats are a great accessory, but over time, wearing them a lot will weaken that hairline. So up in here, if you, you probably never saw it or never paid attention because I, I kind of camouflage it, you know, really well. And sometimes with tighter textures, you know, we can get away with a little bit more things. But there is a hairline issue uh, so much so that I don't even cut it up there. You know, when it comes to getting lined up in the barbershop, my barber does not cut it because I don't want it going back too far. Because what tends to happen is the barber will try to get a nice crispy line, but then he has to go too deep into the hairline to get it. So then you end up with more cut off than you really want. So I don't even fool with it. You know what I mean? But in the way I wear my hair, it doesn't even matter. But the hairline is a weaker area of the hair. So if you're wearing hats, scarves, headbands, all those things, you want to be careful. So what I do is I wear a silk. Um, I don't have it on today because this hat is a little tighter than the normal hats I wear. But when I wear like my scully, you know what I mean? I have a satin cap that I have on under it. So my hat, is my all of my hair is under the satin cap. Uh, and then I put the actual scully on top of it. You get what I'm saying? And that helps to kind of keep from the hat from rubbing against the hairline, you know, which ultimately is what causes the hairline to become weaker and the hair to get broken and then fall out and et cetera, et cetera. So that helps. But again, even the satin cap, even though I wear a satin cap, I still need to, you know, let my hair breathe. I still need to let my hair get air. Uh, so that way, you know, it doesn't continue to break. Because even though it's satin does not mean that the, the tension or the pressure won't work against me. So even that is should be done at a minimum as well. But that will help you if you just have to wear hats because of the weather, et cetera, et cetera. But the hairline is weaker. So you always want to pay attention to all those things. And I think if you just start there, you will see a difference in your hairline. And ultimately, I would suggest trying the Myel product as well, the oil that I mentioned to um uh, Miss Katrina. All righty. One more question we have from Aja. Aja, what a pretty name. Aja. How to moisturize my hair during the winter? I think I told somebody else this on the last video. Very high density treatments. Joy Coach uh, moisturizing treatment is a good one that I like. Then you want to follow that with your uh, leave in products, etc. That is definitely a goal for the wintertime. And also, when the wintertime, silk, satin, scarves, bonnets, a must. So I think I've kind of went over that with the other young lady. So Aja, I hope that helps you. Lene, Lene asks, what's the best way to grow your hair out and for it to grow back thicker? What is the best way to grow your hair out and for it to grow back thicker? Okay, so we have two part question here. Best way to grow your hair out is I think I mentioned that to the other young lady retention. So you want to be careful of how you're treating your hair that is already on your head, because the only thing when it's talking about growing out, the hair is going to grow naturally on its own. However, how much you retain is going to be based on how you treat it. So if you're treating your hair right with moisturizers, conditioners, keeping the ends trim, watching the heating, you'll get the growth that you want. However, the thickness is something that is going to have to come, in my opinion, with nutrition. I think supplements, I don't have any specific recommendations. However, there are some on the site that I like. And the reason why I'm not saying I don't have any specific is because I don't really know your diet, your lifestyle, your need or from a medical standpoint. However, I can tell you what I like and what has worked for me. Definitely hair and nail supplements are great to use. I even have found good results with products like collagen powder. I've even found uh, good results with things like wheatgrass, which I also I, I take uh, regularly. So those are things that might help to thicken the hair. There are other medical or pharmaceutical grade things that I don't typically even want to mention here because those tend to be more for hair loss people and it could have an adverse effect if you're just using it just to be using it. So I would stick with the, the nutrition and the different supplements that I've mentioned for hair thickening, for hair thickening. Now, there are some oils and uh, a lot of oils and different things that are on the market. I think I'll do a separate video for that because it's going to require a little bit more detail. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes people watch these videos and they just run and buy and just run and do without having a full understanding 
of what it is they're using, the products, what the uh, adverse effects may be. So I think um, I'll do a separate video to really get to detail about some of those products. So stick with us, subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff. And we'll be back with some more awesome in, uh, content on that. But I think that will give you a good start. I think that'll give you a good start. Shanti, Shanti asks how to get my hair healthy again after 40. Ah, healthy again after 40. So it's hard for me to really answer that specifically other than just telling you some of the things that I've just told many of the others here in the video because I don't know the specific need or the specific issue that you're having. But I would say it is possible. Uh, sometimes people think 40, you know, your hair starts to change and all that kind of stuff. It may not grow as fast as it did maybe when you're in, in your 20s and your teens, but it does not mean it can't and won't grow because it will. But how to keep it healthy Again, we're talking about how we treat it. You know what I mean? You're saying how to keep it healthy. So I'm thinking you're speaking of the hair that's already on your head. Treat it well. Good products, good conditioners. Knowing the system behind your hair, how often you need to shampoo it. Some people's hair don't need to be shampooed every week. Some people can go through two to three weeks of shampooing. Other people, their hair starts to like, like I'll take me for example. If I, I know when I need to shampoo my hair because one is my scalp starts to itch really bad. And then I just start to feel like my hair is just gunky and just needs to, you know, it just has too much going on and the hair starts to not hold as well. You know what I mean? When it comes to having this vibrant look. So I say, okay, I need a shampoo. So knowing your hair type specifically and what works well with it and keep in mind, your hair does like a routine, you know, hair does like a routine. So sometimes if you're used to getting your hair done every two weeks and you go about four weeks, your hair will tell you like, okay, okay. what's going on? We're not used to this. So sometimes <laughs> your hair will tell you, your hair and your scalp will tell you, like I told you, mine begins to get itchy and just irritated. You know what I mean? That's how I know. So keeping a good regimen of hair care, taking care of your ends, especially so that you can have retention. And um, I think if you're if you're one who's interested in, in involving yourself in some supplements, I would try a couple. If you have a dermatologist, try them and see if you're having specific issues, ask them and see what it is that they recommend and maybe try a couple of supplements to see as well. But Hair health after 40 is 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 definitely, definitely possible. Wow. There are many who are 40 and plus and have great, beautiful, natural hair. I'm not talking about weaves and extension, but they have beautiful, natural hair. So it is possible for you as well. So I hope this helps you, Miss Shanti. Okay, Brenda. Brenda asked ideas. So I'm guessing she's asking me my ideas around hair loss, thinning during menopause. Well, Definitely, uh, our hair is prone to hormonal issues. So if there are hormonal issues and a menopause is kind of in that category, sometimes we will see hair loss. Also, if there is medication, you know, obviously if you're in menopause, you know, I'm assuming, and I know people do go into menopause early, but I'm going to assume you're 50 plus. If you're on any other hormonal product, I mean, not products, but medications, that could also be a result of the hair loss and thinning. Also, it could be hereditary. So I would look into all of those areas to see. Uh, I know I tend to see a lot of thinning when it comes to people who take blood pressure medicines and it, it's they have varying degrees, but I notice it consistently with individuals who are on blood pressure pills for whatever reason that pill tends to cause hair thinning. I'm not saying you're on that, but if you have any medications, you may want to research them and just ask your physician if those medications have a side effect to hair loss, if there's a side effect of hair loss or hair thinning um, after 50. But I think during menopause, uh, the hormonal issue and depending on I know there are varying degrees of menopause. Some may have, you know, more things that they deal with than others. I would definitely be one to care for your hair. I don't know what state or style you wear your hair in, uh, but maybe doing something that may kind of help support the state that you're in. Because obviously I'm thinking you're in a state where you're seeing some thinning um, and keep in mind, thinning can be part of the growth cycle of hair. So we have to be able to classify thinning and I don't really have time to go into it in detail, but we have to be able to really classify thinning versus hair loss because some people think because they see strands in their hand that it's thinning not necessarily we have to consider thinning and i guess i'll just tap into it just a bit 
thinning as the number of hairs per diameter square inch. So if I can square my hair off within an inch square on my head and I can see more scalp than I saw maybe six months ago, then I'm experiencing thinning. However, if I square my hair off and the hair strands are just as dense as they were six months ago, then I might not necessarily be experiencing thinning. I may be experiencing shedding, which is a part of the natural growth cycle of hair. So that's just a little tidbit I want you to uh, kind of work with. But hopefully this helps you. I hope I answered your question. Um, yeah, I hope I did. All righty. But I thank you for tuning in and joining us, Brenda. Um, best of luck to you. Pr 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 hmm. I'm going to try to say this name. It's, it's a, it looks like it's supposed to be pronounced, pronounced really pretty. And I want to make sure I pronounce it pretty because it's spelled P-R-I-S-C-A. Prisca. 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 Ain't that pretty? Prisca. Prisca asks, how does porosity and texture affect product choice? Prisca. Look, I'm going to say your name this whole second. Because it's so such a pretty name. Prisca. Texture and porosity affects product choice. It's probably the number one thing you need to consider next to hair type when you're talking about choosing a product. So your texture would be whether your hair is cottony, whether it's wooly, whether it's silky, soft, rough, coarse. You get what I'm saying? All of those things describe what texture you may have. Porosity has to do with the amount of moisture that your hair can absorb. So if it's low porosity, it does not absorb much moisture at all. If it's normal porosity, it absorbs just enough moisture and releases what it does not need. If it's highly porous or high porosity, it absorbs way too much moisture and excretes way too much moisture. So what does that mean? That means that high porosity hair is going to be much more prone to damage because it does. it's kind of like a cup that has a hole in it. You get what I'm saying? It holds the water for seconds, but just as much as it's holding, it's, it's running out of the bottom. You get what I'm saying? Whereas normal porosity, it's going to take as much water in the cup and everything else is going to overflow, but that cup is still full. It has just the amount that it needs. And low porosity is like a pouring water into a glass that has ice block in it. You know what I mean? It's not it's not taking nothing because it's just tight and it won't it's not it's restricted. You get what I'm saying? It won't absorb. So when you're talking about porosity and texture, it is very important because hair that is highly porous needs to be filled. It needs to be treated before it will hold any moisture. You know what I mean? If you have highly porous, coarse hair, then now we know you need not only moisture, but you need strength because the moisture I put in is not going to hold because it's highly porous. You get what I'm saying? So texture and porosity, Prisca, play a huge role in what product you choose. So I'm hoping that you know Prisca. Look, I'll say your name. Your hair care process, your hair porosity and texture so that you're making the right choice for your hair care regimen. OK, thank you so much, Prisca, for asking that beautiful question. And as you know, beautiful name. Love it. So Tiffany, and I think this is our last one. Tiffany, Tiffany asked how to know your hair type, how to know your hair type. Well, you know what? The easiest way to know your hair type, and this is for somebody who's not experienced, no professional background, is to touch your hair. <laughs> touch your hair. If you touched your hair and you know how cotton feels and it feels similar, and I'm talking about in its natural form, that means no product. That means no, not not after you'd have silked it out and put all the laden it with with beautiful oils and all that kind of stuff. Now I'm talking about in its natural form. So you just shampooed your hair, you wet it, and you have nothing in it, and it's drying out in its natural form. What does your hair feel like? Is it rough, that woolly like? Then you have a coarse texture or a coarse hair type. You get what I'm saying? Is it soft and silky? then you have a silky hair texture. You get what I'm saying? You have a medium texture. Is it is it cottony and smushy? That's my hair. My hair is a cottony. You know what I mean? My hair is cotton-like. So I have a cotton-like hair type, hair texture. You get what I'm saying? And all of those elements, understanding them will 
help you to kind of understand how your hair will respond to certain things. Because obviously wool is going to be a lot more resistant, a lot more coarse, a lot more prone to dryness and maybe even uh, low porosity, having a low ability to absorb moisture. Whereas cotton is going to absorb everything, but it's also going to absorb it to the point where you're going to have to keep reapplying. Because if you put uh, alcohol on a cotton ball or something, water on alcohol. What? No, I water on a cotton ball <laughs> it's going to absorb it right it's going to expand and absorb and all that kind of stuff but you sit it there for a while and come back guess what that cotton ball gonna be you know what i mean it's gonna be almost dry again you get what i'm saying so cotton hair absorbs but it also releases you get what i'm saying it's not necessarily highly porous because it does absorb it but it does not hold on to it you get what i'm saying so all of these ways will help you kind of understand your hair type but honestly if you just want the simplest form without necessarily a professional uh, standing over you, just touch your hair. And if you've ever touched cotton and it feels a little bit similar, then you kind of know. Now, there are times where you have a blend of textures. So you want to be mindful of that, of that. But this simple exercise will help you kind of know your hair type. Tiffany, I hope that helped you. So that is the end of our Know and Grow Your Hair, Hair Care Questions round two. This is part two. So if you missed part one, go back and watch it. It's going to be linked down here at the video. There were some uh, amazing questions in that one as well. So I want to make sure that you can see those questions and get some understanding on where it, what it is that you may need for your hair. But if you've tuned in to both of them, thank you so much for joining me. If you were a part of the Know and Grow Your Hair Challenge, because these are ladies who are a part of the Know and Grow Your Hair Challenge. We had a big session not long ago where we had a lesson and we played games and we had just a good old hair care time together. Uh, these ladies submitted these questions and I wasn't able to get to all of them. So I decided to do this video uh, and the video prior. So I want to thank you for tuning in and joining and being a part of this hair care Q&A. And if you have any questions, drop them down in the lines below. I may be able to get to them in the near future to answer your burning hair care questions. But until then, uh, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel and uh, turn on your notification bell. I think they say that's important because it keeps you in, in, informed and alert to what's going on. Turn on your notification bell so you can be aware and alerted anytime we post any new content. Thank you so much for joining me here on the channel and I'll see you real soon. Cornell Germain here. Take care.